8,320 pounds. This is the big, beautiful Mini Plus 30 RLSS here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And this is what I refer to as a flat deck fifth wheel because it has the same floor plan as something like the ultra popular 3120 Montana you'd find here at Halet RV. We've got dual opposing living room slides, all the windows on the door side, bedroom slide out, and more closet space than you could rightfully shake a stick at. I don't know how much it takes before you can shake a stick at one, but this has enough that you can't. <laughs> now, almost any big triple slide travel trailer like this, the ones that I refer to as flat deck fifth wheels, with the slide closed, you're just not going to get to much of the living room. But most of the time, this thing's usually going to be parked somewhere where it is uh, opened up. However, if you are going down the road, you need to bunk down for the night, or you need to get to the bathroom, it is quick and easy to do so. Now, one of the things I want to mention as we go here, there are different decors that you can apply, both inside and outside, actually. Like, this is the stone decor, which brightens and lightens it up, but it's still a very neutral mid-tone with an overall brown sort of shade to it. It's got a slight tinge of grayish about it, if you will. Um, but uh, overall, I think that this is the, in, in my view, I think this is the, the best-looking decor that they have in this layout. Um, the uh, ceiling here is vaulted, opens it right up, gives you that nice big open sense of space. What's cool too is with a vaulted ceiling, you will tend not to get sweat lines along uh, the sidewall because you have even insulation across the entire span of the roof. Now, um, you've got a easy all LED lighting package, but what's kind of cool is you actually have a separate um, little switch here for living lights and kitchen lights with switches in each appropriate zone. That is a trend I've noticed in a lot of newer RVs, is that you have to walk halfway across the camper to get to the centralized light switch panel when sometimes, you know, like, I just, I'm standing here and I want to use the lights right there. So I like how they put this together. That skylight right there above the uh, kitchen area, really excellent for lighting in some of that natural ambient light. Now the lighter, brighter decor that we have going on in here, it is uh, really the signature calling card of the uh, Winnebago family of travel trailers. Um, moving inside here, you can see the entertainment center is positioned on the corner of Boardwalk and Park Place for easy, easy viewing. Whether you're in that uh, theater seating that's uh, right next to where I'm standing currently or from the dining table, which is right behind me, easy views. Or if you're having more of a conversational thing, you can uh, uh, point it back a little bit toward the extra wide rear sofa back here. Uh, you know, and have a uh, like a rear living entertainment situation going on uh, as well. Along the rear wall here, we actually have an extra large rear trifold sleeper sofa hide bed. Uh, you might notice it's actually kind of like a three section versus a more common two section. That's because they use a wider sofa across the rear wall. This almost like a, a wide body RV. But what's neat is that does not block the use of uh, the uh, far, or I guess near in this case theater seat far as compared to the height of bed <laughs> so this is a couple's coach that could sleep two or three pretty easy and i know that for a fact because that's the exact sleeping arrangement uh i used recently on a family camping trip in my parents fifth wheel put my kid on the height on the theater seat wife and i on the height of bed we were good to go now from here i'd like to draw some attention to the fact that all of the windows open for airflow and they are all extra large the, even that rear window, a lot of RVs with rear living room arrangements like this with a rear window, that one might not open for air. Every darn window on this thing will open right up and just let in a flood of light. Now this is definitely more of a premium series trailer. I could find you a dollar cheaper trailer, but you're going to start seeing downgrades of materials. Like here we've got the nicer, uh, you know, uh, hardwood sort of slide fascias as opposed to something like a fiberboard, which is okay. It's less expensive. But I think if what you're looking for is that last RV you're ever going to own, that retirement grade, Winnebago definitely uh, will, uh, you know, serve that purpose quite well. The little armrest that's inside that theater seat right there is also a perfect place to keep your remote controls. Anytime you can keep another thing sort of corralled in a camper, I think it's a good thing. Now, uh, there's different dining arrangements over here, though I think uh, almost anybody is going to probably prefer a freestanding table and chairs arrangement in a big floor plan like this. And um, something else to kind of point out here, 
is that next to, on both sides of the super slide, you have household and USB plugs. So you can always have different devices charging in different areas. And as someone who just went on a big family camping trip with five people in the RV, I can tell you that we were off and juggling chargers. Now normally we did just fine, but it is nice when you don't have to like wait for a plug to open up or anything like that. It, it was nice having lots of outlets everywhere. Um, the uh, opposing slides here give this thing this nice, big, wide open feel. And another thing that's not hurting that whatsoever is the fact that you've got nothing but windows over here on the camping side of the RV, starting with the sofa side breeze window. You have amazing views of your entire campsite. And another thing that's kind of cool is the entry door itself has a real window, not just a, sh uh, a, a frosty glass, but there is a night privacy shade built into that, so you can pull that down as well. Um, over here in the kitchen, just like the rest of the living room, you are not going to be disappointed in the 30 RLSS. Because when it opens up, it opens up big. Starting up here in the little sort of entry hutch. Um, this is going to be really handy over here for things like coffee makers. You see that you do have some appliance outlets right there. Uh, nice little sort of in the kitchen, but out of the way position. And nice deep counter space on that also. They did extend the RV a little bit to uh, accommodate that, but more counter space, I think most people agree, is gonna be better than less. You've got real tile backsplashes in here, and you can see we've got plywood boxed full extension drawers here. And these are all hardwood framed uh, pocket screw cabinet door, or uh, styles for longer lasting uh, construction. We do have an eight cubic foot gas electric fridge freezer, which is pretty common in this size and category. One of the things that you're not seeing here though, um, it benefits both the kitchen and the bathroom, is the larger 10 gallon gas electric fast recharge water heater. This has the same size water heater as a giant luxury fifth wheel that you might find here at Halet RV. And that is significantly larger. Uh, the, the vessel itself is, um, well, 67% larger than a normal water heater you'd find in a camper this class and category. The dedicated pantry space right here in the slide out and all of these huge drawers here in the kitchen. Like I said, when this thing opens up, it opens up big. They didn't go small on anything in that kitchen area. Kind of like the prep space. You can see the uh, solid surface counters here in the Mini Plus um, that you won't find actually in the remainder of the Mini family. They will have a thermal foil normally. The Mini Pluses always have these nice uh, solid surface here. But the recessed sink and stovetop take your prep space from 10 to 11, basically. They just crank it up to 11. Quick look at the island before we move on. Uh, it starts with a high-rise sprayer faucet up top. And you can see it's actually a uh, stainless double sink below. And they are very deep large basins. I wanted to pull one of those covers off so you got a good look at it. Now down here, you've got huge space for like a, uh, a big wastebasket and more drawers. There are, let's see, seven, eight drawers in this kitchen alone. And that that is something that amazes me. There are many brands that will build a floor plan like this. And it's the details on like the kitchen execution, things like that, that will separate uh, these Winnebago's from a lot of the other guys. Um, Moving up here to the bathroom, one thing I want to point out, well, first of all, you can see it's dual entry. You know, you can get to, uh, from the hallway here, you can get to it from the bathroom. Now, also, the bathroom is located right next to the main entry door, so it is there for quick and easy access. Whether you're traveling or if you're just at a destination, it's nice to not have to, uh, you know, track a whole bunch of, like, dirt and debris through the camper the whole time. You've got a dedicated linen uh, cabinet right here in the bathroom, which is something, again, they had to make a little more space to accommodate, but they've done so, and it's it's worth every inch and every ounce of weight that it might have incurred. Now, the vaulted ceiling plus the smart positioning at Skylight will make this uh, tall person friendly, even for folks like me. Um, the uh, radius shower also gives us some more elbow room in here. And then just the, the beautiful cosmetics on the remainder of the bathroom area here at Sharp. So this is the uh, thermal foil type countertop stuff I was telling you about in the kitchen area. And notice that even in the bathroom, they're still using a nicer stainless sink. And that is a large bowl stainless sink to give you plenty of room. A porcelain foot flush toilet kind of rounds out the bathroom, as does 
lots of leg room in here. Now, one thing I want to point out as we move up to the bedroom is how every doorway is fully framed in Winnebago trailers. They do that all the way through even their, their uh, little micro minis. And it keeps the door jam square. So like right now, the jacks aren't down. The door is gonna open and close properly every time and not pop open in transit. Now this model is a queen bed only. There is no king option available on this one. So that is something I do want you folks to keep in mind. Um, that being said, it's also a deeper bed slide. When you go outside of an RV, I encourage you to kind of take note of that. Take note of the depth of the bedroom slide compared to the uh, slide behind it. And you'll see the Winnebago does use a deeper slide here, which means bigger windows there, and it means more floor space here for more open air accessibility, which I don't know of anyone that feels that's, you know, not a good thing. Now, in addition to that big, full, eight-foot wide front closet, you've also got full easy lift access to the underbed storage here and you've got a very cool different interesting thing going on in this closet over here if you need to transport some exceptionally tall stuff or if you just even need to store a couple brooms at your campsite you've got a drop down uh, or flip up as it were shelf right here that can kind of cross the bridge between your front pass-through storage and your separated bedroom storage. Now, right across from the bed, obviously, we've got our a, a big six-drawer dresser here as opposed to, you know, a, a dollar cheaper four. None of this is designed to be the dollar cheaper version. This is designed to be a dollar better version with uh, TV hookups across. So there are a lot of really key important features to, to discuss out here, but one of the ones I want to tune in on real quick is the fact that you have different exterior skin options available on your Winnebago trailers. Um, this is a platinum. There could be a white, there could be blue, uh, you know, red, champagne, etc. So this video may not exactly reflect the specific RV that we have in stock. Um, case in point, this one was actually ordered by a customer with uh, one air conditioner and second air prep. When we would normally stock and build these, actually this is, uh, this is a near identical match for how we would normally build them here at Halet RV, save for the difference that we would typically build this floor plan with a second air conditioner pre-installed in the bedroom area because this is such a large RV. You have so much cubic foot of space to cool here. We think you want that extra st uh, cooling capacity. The owner of this RV, who had it built for their needs and wants and uses and whatnot, they kind of said, I don't think we need that. My guess is they're gonna, we're going to see them back within a year and a half in our parts store, adding a uh, second air conditioner to it. Um, so your power awning right here, LED lights below and against the industry's highest grade fiberglass skin with the greatest mirror-like reflectivity of anything else you're going to find in this class and category, it will light up like a Christmas tree out here. Outside TV hookups. Um, Anti-slam entry door makes coming and going easy on this one uh, so that uh, if you uh, have your hands full and you flip the door, if the wind catches it, even this wider, longer 30-inch door doesn't slam uh, open or shut. And you've got the little screenshot auto-close screen band here. But what's neat and what a lot of people don't realize, you also have a screen door lock. Most people are like, what are you talking about? So this little handle right here, it's neat for opening and closing the screen door without having to slide the panel. But if you slide it open, flip it down, then slam it shut, you actually lock the screen door, which is really, really cool. Very nice if you've got a grandkid over for the weekend. The aluminum steps here, they're just physically more stable than uh, a less expensive steel step. They're also not slippery when your feet get wet, which is fantastic. Now, up here... This is that, remember we we're just in the bedroom talking about the, the storage that can kind of bleed the difference between this huge drop frame fifth wheel style storage compartment up front here. And then this is actually the bottom of your hanging wardrobe closet, which is interesting. You can, and this is a nice little spot. You get to see the pocket screwed cabinetry in there. But if you do need to transport tall stuff, that will actually kind of flip up and sort of catch in place. So you can transport tall stuff or store tall stuff at your campsite. And you've got the uh, easier sort of compression slam latches to keep that sucker locked down. Now, uh, they've been building this floor plan for a while, but this new exterior decor package, I think the, the decal setup on this is just stunning. They've revised the, the Winnebago uh, uh, you know, graphic on the front of it. 
everything on this looks good. It almost looks like it has a little bit of an automotive grill on that lower decal there. Now, once again, you see how you do have that deeper bedroom slide here. They use the extra deep bed slide to give you a larger feeling bedroom with more floor space. So if the two of you wake up at the same time, you're not constantly tripping over one another, which is nice. Now, you see how um, normally all your outside baggage doors would flip up and magnet latch. That extra tall vertical door is just kind of an exceptionally different thing. 30-pound uh, propane tanks for more time between fills, power awning and tongue jack, and something that you can't see from just a video like this is that they're higher grade awnings and jacks that move faster, last longer, higher grade motors on those. It's, it gets you camping sooner and it breaks camp faster. It just makes life quicker, faster, easier. The uh, Over here, we've got a simple side mount solar prep for portable panels if you want to move a panel around the campsite and chase the sun it's nice to be able to park the camper in the shade and still be able to get some solar charge on your batteries private docking center up front here very fifth wheel in nature again this has a drop frame just like a fifth wheel and your cable your hoses that stuff can actually go down through that little access panel right here and uh, feed through the bottom of the camper so that you you have uh, you don't have to open the baggage door to be able to use your RV basically simple battery disconnect is also very handy for keeping your batteries topped off when you're um, you know not using the RV because you won't have a trickle drain effect on the battery separate cable and satellite hookups are also ideal for uh, those sort of users now Another thing you can't see is the uh, weather package that is an optional piece of equipment, but something that we're putting on almost across the board on even the small Winnebago trailers. Um, so it, it, this has always had an enclosed heated underbelly, and that's great. We've taken it up another notch, though, with a, uh, a, a layer of radiant insulation. Now, what radiant insulation does, it does not, that, that's foil insulation, basically, guys. It does not add our values. The R value of the RV does not change. What it does though is it provides a different type of uh, protection with a heat reflection. So in a summertime situation like this with the heat blaring on the outside, you've got a layer of sun reflective foil starting at the nose, across the roof, and all the way down the rear wall. And that'll help keep a lot of sun out of this thing. Then in the underbelly we just looked at, there's a layer of double-sided astrofoil to help protect your holding tanks from those um, you know, extended cold situations. Now, if it's going to be zero degrees with the wind blowing, get it winterized, guys. It's not, it, no RV is really made for hard use like that. Howdy, folks. Welcome. Um, black tank flush. Simple, quick little hookup right here. And I like how they put their water hookups below the electrical hookup. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not super worried when a manufacturer puts a water hookup above that. We know that water and electricity doesn't mix. We've known that since that we were children and probably got shocked the first time trying to prove mom and dad wrong. Maybe that's just my adventure. I don't know. But the fact is, you know, if you've got your power plug hooked up outside and it rains, you don't think twice about that, do you? Because the RV is built to withstand rain, right? Well, having a water inlet right above that is really no different but it's nice to not have water constantly dripping on that thing tempting fate and once again remember bigger water heater on this just like a a large luxury fifth wheel um let me back up here these have four corner power stabilizer jacks and what's cool is that each jack actually has its own individual button they're not sort of ratcheted together so you don't have to wait for the left side to come down for the right side. Now that's different from auto leveling. Those are two different things, guys. If you need details on that, then just give our team a call here. Um, we are ready for backup or observation cameras. Uh, the roof, fully walkable, of course. We'll get up there in just a minute. And Actually, short of uh, mentioning once again that you have cross breeze windows everywhere and huge amounts of windows over here on the door side of the RV, I think we are ready to take a trip upstairs. So again, just to mention, normally the way we would build these, it would include a second air conditioner above the bedroom, which would be the very forward vent that we're looking at currently. This one again was a customer ordered unit and they said, I want it to be second air ready. We'll come back and add one if we need it. And I'll, again, I'll be surprised if they don't. Um, one of our, and the reason that we really tuned into that guys is a lot of customer feedback. One of our personal clients, Mr. Goodman from Tennessee who made the trip up here, Mr. Larry Brown, um, he's, he's earned a lot of my respect for just conducting himself in a decent way. He purchased a 30 RLSS that uh, we had uh, last year here at Haylet RV. Beautiful blue skin, took her back to Tennessee and he said, buddy, it needs a second air. And as soon as he put one on, he goes, now I can hang a, a rack of meat in this thing and it'll keep it cool. But 
he still needed to add it. So that's one of those things that we can, when we do it from the factory level, as opposed to aftermarket guys, it's like one third of the cost. If you go adding a second air, like I'm capable of doing it here at Halet RV. Well, not me personally, but our team <laughs> up in this, you don't want me putting a second air on an RV. But our team is capable of doing it here at Halet RV, but at a significantly higher cost than it can be done at the factory level. It's much easier to do it when the whole thing's first coming together. Now, while we're up here, all kinds of heavy sealant. They're very heavy handed with their sealant at Winnebago so that you don't have any sort of uh, leak issues. And the King Jack antenna system here, I love this thing. You don't have to crank it up and down and all you have to do is turn it to the direction you want. But what's really cool about this thing, guys, is inside, uh, when you are turning it, it actually has a signal strength indicator. So you can have a, a better idea before you have to like walk over the TV and hit the channel scan button how many channels you're going to get. It just saves you that extra back and forth and back and forth and it makes campsite setup much much easier. Now obviously we've got a full walk on roof. I'm all over this thing but this has a full aluminum skeleton even the roof trusses. This is a full tubular aluminum skeleton frame which is how you can get a big triple slide camper with an extra deep bed slide that only weighs 8,300 pounds. Now, the question becomes half ton towability, and the answer is that depends. Do you have a really properly equipped half ton with a really heavy anti-sway system, um, you know, hitching system that we can apply for you here? The answer then is maybe. Would you be more comfortable towing something like this with a three quarter ton? Yes. And it's not because of the weight, it's because of the length. This is a long RV, ladies and gentlemen. And the longer the RV, the more inclined it is to push the vehicle around on the road. So if you're not gonna be doing a lot of towing and you've got a heavier half ton with a good payload package, you're probably gonna be fine. If you wanna take this thing and go from here to there to everywhere long distances, you might want a little bigger vehicle or at least a really heavy half ton. So that's just some general advice for you. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with this specific RV, but I know that's a big question for towability out there. And answering questions like that, before people even ask them, doing videos like this, that's what we do every day here at Haylet RV of Goldwater, Michigan. And that's why we have so many different brands and so many customers from so many different states coming in all the time. So, you know, short of hidden fees that we don't do, we do everything else, whether it's hitching, pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.